Hello and welcome everybody. I am Gustavo Tolosa from Dallas, Texas, and I am joined by Dr. McDougall, who's back from uh, Alaska, and he's back in Santa Rosa, California, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the trip, and then we're going to talk about the website and have some questions. So welcome, Dr. McDougall. How are you today? I'm, I'm great. I had a, an amazing trip. I tuned completely out of society, out of my work, cut down, you know, cut, left my computer home, put an email notice up that many of you may have gotten that says uh, you cannot reach me for a week. Uh, the thing that I found, which was kind of interesting, always disappointing to me when I come home from a trip like this and I shut my email down is uh, nobody really missed me. You know, I don't really think <laughs> I, I, I got no urgent messages. I got no invitations from President Obama to come and change the world. I got basically nothing. So well, we missed you. We all missed you. So. Yeah, right. Well, I feel <laughs> I, I feel free, free to travel again. <laughs> anyway, we, we got home, uh, uh, Mary and I and Heather and Heather's husband, Brant and our three grandchildren went on this amazing trip aboard uh, a National Geographic uh, guided tour on the uh, ship, the, uh, the Seabird. And uh, there were 62 people along. There were very experienced guides from National Geographic Organization. And we saw all kinds of things. We uh, saw brown bears and we saw black bears and we saw orcas and uh, uh, bubble feeding with humpback whales, all the things that you'd hope to see on a trip to this beautiful, beautiful land. This is my third trip to Alaska in my lifetime. The first time I went was 1993. And then I went in 2001, and now here it is 2016. And I can tell you, uh, in fact, they mentioned it on many occasions. When we went to Mandenhall Glacier and other glaciers, they mentioned how the glacier used to be over there, you know, miles and miles from where it is now. And uh, even though they mentioned the receding of the glaciers and how unfortunate that, that is, it was hardly a word mentioned about global warming from anybody, from any of the guides, any of the rangers. It was just like this was a taboo subject, global warming. And maybe they thought that uh, as visitors, it would spoil our vacation to think about uh, the fact that this beautiful environment was disappearing as is the rest of the world changing. And maybe they thought there was no reason to mention it because we can't do anything about global warming. I don't know, but for some other strange reason, there was this huge void, I figured, a huge void in the discussion that uh, should be going on in terms of uh, losing planet Earth and uh, global warming and what we must do about it. Of course, we have all have our own guilt about this. We contributed uh, greatly to the global warming by flying 62 people to uh, Alaska yeah, I'll take that criticism. And uh, 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 driving the ship for seven days on, I'm sure, diesel fuel, I'll take that criticism. So none of us are, uh, you know, none of us are guiltless, except a few people living out in a tent someplace. But there are things that we can and should do. And one of the things that should have been mentioned was uh, how unique our group was. Uh, we, uh, the Lindblad expedition, label our crews as the vegan no oil charter. So we had uh, all vegan starch-based food and the chef did an amazing job, really a good job. Uh, the guides, the National Geographic guides, they all ate with us. And um, there was some interest from the crew uh, on, on the uh, trip. Uh, we actually had a little tour with the, the chef in the kitchen and she talked about how much fun she had making the food. But then somebody asked her if she would be changing her diet. She said, I will never eat this way. So, you know, there were some interesting interactions. But uh, I, I really had hoped uh, that the environmentalists around the world had made the connection with food. In my opinion, you, you cannot call yourself an environmentalist if you eat meat. It's just an oxymoron. It, it, it is, makes no sense at all. You can't go out and then be... Uh, consuming beef and fish and cows and so on and call yourself an environmentalist. So I see that it's not it's not spreading in the environmentalist community. In a newsletter that comes out probably tonight, I talk about uh, the World Wildlife Foundation and the defense of uh, the environmental defense uh, and many other organizations that are supported by the beef industry. 
and uh, other um, non-governmental organizations that are set up that sound like they're out there to prevent the uh, damage to the forest and to prevent, prevent damage to the wildlife and so on. And they give themselves these fancy names that would make you think that what they're doing is they're trying to make a big difference. Well, what they're doing, and if you look at the people who, uh, who are the founders and funders of these organizations, what they're doing is they're protecting themselves, uh, their self-interest, because they know the public is figuring this out, that we are eating the planet to death. So instead of just waking up someday and finding that the consumers aren't buying their cows and pigs and cheese, et cetera, uh, they're preparing for it and trying to uh, soften the blow. They're trying to green their products. And part of that is to put up these organizations, which uh, seem to be legitimate and the consumers buy into it. And I'm sure the guides buy into it and so on. There was a review of, uh, I put in the newsletter coming up of 15 uh, well-known environmental organizations. And of those 15, only one suggested we change to a uh, serious plant food based diet. And that was Center for Science and the Public Interest. The other 15 really uh, either avoided the subject of diet and climate change or uh, recommended insignificant uh, steps for us to take. And that's really surprising since uh, over half the green greenhouse gases are caused by the livestock industry. And as I say in the newsletter, you know, we have one card to play and that's the food card because that's the only one that we can switch overnight. You know, we can all change our diet overnight. Well, <clears throat> anyway, um, uh, it was a great trip. Uh, I don't have great hope, <laughs> uh, but I have to have great hope. I have to have hope. I mean, in my lifetime, I've seen the big tobacco destroyed in this country, and I've uh, seen big uh, alcohol being uh, reined in. Uh, I think it's still possible. It'll take it'll take changes that I can't even imagine to rein in big food and to really make the difference and save the country. Let me see if I can do this. I'll show you a little bit of the newsletter and I'll show you if I can get it, a dedication to uh, to the new book that's coming out. That would be September 28th, 2016 called The Healthiest Diet on the Planet. You can order it now. Yeah, the name of the book again is The Healthiest Diet on the Planet, someone was asking. Yeah, uh, it's, it's The Healthiest Diet on the Planet. Anyways, it has a dedication. And there, and the dedication is to my seven grandchildren and all grandchildren, uh, with a comment that uh, ours, uh, the world is ours to save, and we can stop this. We can uh, stop this environmental destruction. And I, of course, uh, indicate, claim that mm -hmm. the book "The Healthiest Diet on the Planet" is going to be central to waking right. people up and to getting this long overdue change done. I was going to show you that. I don't know what I, let me try one other thing to show you that. I thought it was kind of cool that came out. And that's, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I, 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 can you see that? Yeah, we can see that. That's a great picture. Isn't that, isn't that great? When my, when my daughter saw it, you know, my daughter is one of my biggest critics. <laughs> there is all a good intention. She, you know, she thinks dad's going to live to be 200 and, uh, shouldn't be getting old and anyway when i showed her this picture i said now look don't i look good she says photoshopped i said come on come on i look that good anyway uh this is uh was it from uh veg world magazine which is an online magazine and i'm featured on the front cover yes and uh, the subscription for this for a year is free so if you go to veg world everything's vegworld.com you can sign up and uh, you'll get uh, this issue, which has a whole story about me, which is quite, I have to say, the writer did a phenomenal job and bring, brought, brought out uh, 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 one of my personality qualities that people will know me cannot uh, argue with, and that I, is I am fearless and frank. I am not politically correct. You know, I say it as I believe it to be, and uh, uh, this article very much reflects Mm -hmm. uh, the true McDougal. You know, I uh, my regret is it wasn't in Time Magazine. But right. <laughs> you never know with the, with the internet the way it is, and we're oh yeah, and Facebook yeah. and so on. Maybe a lot of people will get to read this uh, this publication, and hopefully they'll find uh, the way they presented me to be well worth sharing with others. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, I'm glad you see that. I hope you enjoy the newsletter that comes out probably today. Uh, and it lists a whole bunch of, of things, including the dedication and uh, 
some references like to articles in National Geographic magazine that show that, you know, National Geographic is well aware that meat is destroying the planet. Right, right. It just, they, you know, they, they don't, I don't know. It's just time. But time, time we don't have. That's the problem. It's just like that's the time, problem. Took time to do the cigarette thing. It just another, takes, yeah. yeah, it takes a lot of time. An another thing that I was um, kind of had fun with this week is I talked to an East Coast medical residency program, and uh, you know I gave them a discussion, a very frank discussion about <laughs> how uh, medicine is being practiced and why what I do is the right thing to do. And before I agreed to do this, I asked that they not only have the medical residents there and students, but they also have the uh, professors. I said, because, you know, I'm not going to waste my time telling these people everything that I believe to be true. And then as soon as you turn the Skype off, then the professors uh, say, well, what he said was not true. It's a big, big bunch of garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, I said, I don't want that to happen. I said, I want them right there and I want them up on the, up on the microphone and tell me what I'm saying is incorrect. Well, it was kind of interesting. I spent about almost an hour with them and uh, there was uh, oh, uh, one question from a professor, why do you think meat is poisoned? And I went through the whole thing again about it's just too much. You know, it's not poisonous for cats, but it's poisonous for people. Uh, that was about it. And then when I got done, I said, I said, you know what? I'm, I am, I'm quite disappointed. I said I expected more of an engagement with the uh, the medical staff and the residents because you all believe otherwise. You know that's all you believe is you treat diabetics with drugs and and uh, you believe that uh, doing uh, angioplasty saved lives. You believe all this, and I just told you it didn't. I gave you the scientific references to prove this, and none of you challenged me. I said therefore, what I would like to do, if you've heard what I had to say. I've given you the scientific references. You can read any of my other material. I would like to schedule another meeting with you. You know, well, let's get this talked about. This is important. This is people's lives. This is the future of medicine. If your school does not catch up to this, you're going to be left behind. And people are going to stop going to hospitals and doctors and, uh, and being involved in medical insurance companies that uh, just uh, put people on drugs and operate on them rather than curing them. That's what's going to happen. Uh, is the is the, uh, the the public is going to become aware of what's going on, and they're going to stop going to traditional medical centers and getting traditional medical insurance, and they're going to be left behind. Now, it doesn't have to be that way, and some of them are aware of the change, and they're trying to kind of get into it the best they can. But they need to hurry up, and I'm happy to help them hurry up even to the point of challenging them specifically. Anything you want to say, or I say or they say about current therapies. So that was kind of fun. Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> well, well, I had a healthy, safe time. I, uh, I, I can tell you it was an experience for my grandchildren. That's why we went. We went because uh, Heather wanted to show her, grand, her children uh, Alaska before it was gone. And the grandchildren had an amazing time. They saw so many things. Uh, my littlest grandson, Ryan, not he's my littlest, littlest, but the littlest of the three that came, they're going on a three hour hike. And they get at one point in the hike, and Ryan's leading the way, almost eight years old, leading the way. And he goes, Bear, bear. <laughs> you know, we'd be, we'd be warning him the whole trip that you have to be very careful if you see a brown bear with cubs. Mothers are very protective. And here's a brown bear with two cubs about 30 feet away from him. Oh. So he, he told me in all confidence, he didn't tell anybody else, but he told his grandpa, he says, Grandpa, I was really scared. <laughs> it's something he'll never forget. And, uh, you know, what we saw was amazing. Oh, I, 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 I will mention at this point, too, uh, is we're going on another adventure trip to Kauai in January. And it's the end, end of January. And then Mary got some more rooms, but this isn't going to go on forever. She's sold out all the rooms she blocked uh, on several occasions, but there is a limit. So <clears throat> Kauai will be great. Uh, there'll be children going along on the trip, uh, at least our three grandkids. And I think there are three other children of the same age, but could be wrong. And then and then the next adventure trip that Heather has planned for her, grand, her children, for my grandchildren, and this is the only reason we're doing it, believe me. When Mary talked to Carol yesterday, and some of you know Carol, she runs the uh, she runs the telecommunications part where, where you call the 800 number. 
uh, they were talking about our future of adventure trips. And Carol says, I don't know why you haven't quit a long time ago. You work so hard and make so little money doing this. And, uh, you know, Mary said, you're right, but we didn't do it really to make money. We did it because we wanted to show people that they could go on a, on a great trip and eat well. And we wanted to take our family before it was my parents and Mary's parents and, and our children. Uh, now it's come to the point where Heather wants to show her children different parts of the world and the best way to do it rather than us to just go as a family, which would be okay. But even more, even more fun is to go with a group of McDougalers because then they have an amazing time. So her next planned trip is in 2018. And we haven't signed the contract. We won't until we find out there's an interest, a really big interest. It's a 100-passenger uh, Lindblad expedition cruise with National Geographic guides going through the Panama Canal and up the west coast of Costa Rica. Now, the last trip to Alaska that we announced sold out in 48 hours, and we still had a waiting list of 40 people that wanted to go. Uh, my guess is this trip will sell out just as fast, but you don't know what 2018 will bring. And I don't know really how many people want to see the Panama Canal. I've been through it twice. It's amazing. West coast of uh, Costa Rica, I've been there at least 23 times. It's amazing. So uh, if you are interested, email carol at drmcdougall.com and tell her you would like to be uh, put on the list. Uh, when we do announce the trip officially, you'll be uh, among the first to be uh, legitimately signed up <clears throat> because uh, my hope is, is that we'll sell out very quickly. And uh, that's what I suspect. So you are going to take a little bit of time, I think, Gustavo, and tell people, uh, along with my help, how we get through this uh, web through this website of ours, which, by the way, that's where you need to go to, to find everything. So what do you got planned? Yeah, I just wanted to, I think the people forget sometimes, I even sometimes forget that most of the questions that they have are already answered there, either by you on a video or in a newsletter or in the, um, uh, there, there is also some a, a group uh, let me discussion see discussion board. A discussion right. board, right. right. Are you able to bring up the, uh, the website? Yeah, I can bring it up. And what I'd like to do is just, uh, I know that you want to maybe highlight a couple yeah, of spots, I'll, I'll and then I have some that I want to highlight, and then I have some questions that people have submitted. So let me bring up the website, and let's see here. Yeah. Oh, so I can see it. Okay. You know, this is where all, all of our efforts go. And uh, one of the things I want to preface by saying is that I get a, a, a comment <clears throat> at least weekly that says, where's the gimmick? Everything's free on their website. And I say, there's no gimmick. I mean, we put the website, we've invested, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into this website and over the years. <clears throat> Uh, we've done it for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, one is it's the main way we get out to you, and two, we really do want to change the world. I think I reverse it in that, that order. I reverse that order. We really we do want to change the world, mm -hmm. and uh, so if, if uh, you know if you could do it better by charging for it, that'd be the way to go. We charge you a nickel a visit, but uh, <laughs> I think I think giving it away at least. Uh, takes away the excuse I can't do it because it's too expensive or whatever you go to the public library and you can read this website and everything there is free so if you want to kind of go through a few things or if you'd yeah, like to start I, you know one thing I want to do is uh, really uh, show people here and encourage them to go to the connect because part of what we're doing here with the webinars is to create a a connection with everybody so that they they feel that they're they always have help in hand and here we have the discussion board under connect and uh jeff novick uh writes there quite a lot so i know people have been asking for for a webinar with him but uh here you can actually get answers from him directly and i'm going there right now and, and, you can, and, Doug, and Doug Lyle. Doug, Doug Lyle as well. And uh, you can see how they they are writing see answers to questions that people have submitted. So, And it's quite uh, fast. So you submit a question, and you don't have to wait a long time to get an answer. So that is one spot that is really, I think, is very important. Of course, here is the, the place where people can sign up for the newsletter and get the current newsletter plus 
other newsletters. And there is an article index. I think that's a great feature there with your feature um, articles. I also like the, um, I also like the, this, a lot of people ask uh, this question, how they can find a doctor in their area. And I don't think they know that they have this here where they can, um, you know, put the zip code and they can actually get a list of some doctors in their area. So that's one thing there. I do want to note that these doctors <clears throat> are not doctors recommended by us. Right. But they are doctors that other people who visit our website found to be worthwhile seeing. And so, uh, you know, there's... There is no connection really with your program. It's just, you know, <clears throat> it's just kind of a, a way for you to narrow your odds in terms of getting a, a uh, doctor that fits with what you want. Right, right. Um, very good. And then the other thing here is the blog. And that's another really good area for people to read more. But where people can go to really get their questions answered is in the search. I love that feature. I know Mary, your wife, really enjoys and uses yeah. it. And, oh, I, do, I do too. I mean, I use it every day to find out things. I can't remember where everything is. One thing before we go on to that, I do want to mention, and if you sign up for the newsletter, uh, that, that list is never sold to anybody else. Uh, right. But you, but you do get, uh, you do get uh, current events, uh, hot topics, uh, breaking news from me, things I want to write about. Somebody comes out with a, a claim that if you eat uh, the, ho the hooves of sheep, you will lose weight and your heart, your heart arteries will clear up and all kinds of other crazy things. This is where I often comment uh, by sending a notice out to you. Like, for example, you'll get the notice or have gotten the notice. You'll get it soon. If you're on this subscription list on how to subscribe to the uh, new magazine, I just showed you uh, Veg World. Uh -huh. and, uh, yes. that article. So you'll get all kinds of announcements. From us, you'll also get announcements about our advanced study weekends, our trips. And uh, but that's the only advertisement you'll get is advertisement about what we do. Now, some people object. They'll write to me and they say, well, can't you put me on a separate list that only gives me newsletters? And the answer is no. No, <laughs> just, just no. get it. You, if you're if you're going to be in contact with us, we'll send you star McDougalers. We're not going to just, uh, just write you and ask what you'd like to have. You get the whole deal, which I right. think people are really into the program. They want to they want to see everything. They want to see all our activities. They want to see any opportunities they can get involved in, and they want to read uh, the comments that I have to put out. So sign up for the newsletter. That's the way to keep, and they also get announcements on our webinars. Right, exactly. Well, it's uh, it's very time consuming if, if you had to divide people into this well, person wants this, that person, yeah, it's yeah. And besides that, we would never do it. I mean, after all, I do need to make a living. Right. <laughs> you guys might think that I inherit billions of dollars and I get to do this for free. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a business. Uh, and it's kind of special because I love what I do and I can look myself in the mirror in the morning and say, you know, John, you and Mary did a good job and really helped people. But this is how we uh, this is how we provide for uh, ourselves and our family is uh, by doing Dr. McDougall's whatever. Yes. Yeah, so don't kid yourself. Exactly. exactly. Well, uh, I just put something up for, as an example because this morning someone had a question about high blood sugar. So if I if I type that, just make sure that you scroll enough down. This is not what you're looking for. That's ads by Google. You're looking for this. This is all in Dr. McDougall's website. So there, if you're interested in in high blood sugar. Or, or something related to that, then, uh, you know, there you go. And yeah, I have to comment. We tried to do it for free and pay, and pay for the Google search. I think it was like two, $300 mm -hmm. a month I was paying. And uh, I decided that at, uh, you know, the cost of two to $3,000 a year, you can uh, suffer through the Google ads. As long as you're aware, like Gustavo said, that the first three or four articles are going to be uh, ads, and then you get down to the stuff that really applies to the website. I think it's real easy to overlook 
what you should be overlooking and get down to what's uh, important. But the search engine is phenomenal. I, I, as I say, Mary and I use it every day to find out things that we've forgotten where they are. Right, exactly. Even I think that even if you type um, something like, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know, kale, um, you can probably get here some recipes as well. Yeah. Yeah, you can get recipes. You can get an article. Uh, article I wrote uh, called "Broccoli and Kale Are Are Bitter." Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, there you go. Broccoli uh, and bitter. <laughs> you can get a lot. You can lots. I think just you know how the world works. You just there it is. Broccoli and kale taste a bit bitter. It's an article I wrote about <clears throat> why it's not a good idea to leave, leave, live on a diet that is of non-starchy vegetables like broccoli and kale and lettuce and so on. It's not not what you should do. You'll enjoy right. that article. So good. That's that's a good way to find things out. Uh, I can just kind of because it's related. If I could jump ahead, we yeah, have to sure. go to education, and you look under health and science, and then you go from health and science to hot topics. I use hot topics every day. I haven't updated them for about two years. I could, you know, I may, but it's really not necessary because all the basic stuff is there. So if you have a a question about uh, say. <clears throat> any medical topics uh, on the left hand side so you want to know about arthritis all the articles i wrote pertaining to arthritis are there or diabetes or heart disease or prostate cancer they're all there for you to read these are articles that i've written mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, so you can go there there's some uh some uh, success stories and the same thing if you go back and you look at the nutritional hot topics uh you will find that <clears throat> That you'll find uh, all your discussions on. You'll have, probably have to hit hot topics again. Right here? Uh, no, up the top, up, right up the top of that hot topics. Right, so, right here? Yes, right there. Hit that again. Okay. So, so you go there and you look down and look, go down a little bit and you see the nutritional hot topics. So if you want to know about calcium and dairy products, all the articles that I've written are there and pregnancy and children and all kinds of things about nutrition. So you can pick out the articles to read. If you you say, well, you know, I have a question. Usually, the title of the article will add will tell you that's the place you should look. But why not read all the articles? I, mean, I wrote them all. It took right. Me a week, took, me, took me a week or two to write each and every article. I spent well since uh, 2002. So what would that be? That'd be 14 years. I spent 14 years putting those articles mm -hmm. together and out for you. And they're worth an hour or 10 minutes or whatever it is. If you have prostate cancer and you want to know about prostate cancer, <clears throat> the prevention, the treatment, the dietary implications. The articles are all there with, by the way, with all of the scientific references. And you can print right. these out. Right. You know, you can say say you have a positive PSA test or, you know, some other, some other thing that's uh, concerning you greatly. Or you want to know why the doctor isn't treating diabetes like I treat diabetes. And you want to know about the studies that show, all the studies show that aggressive treatment of type 2 diabetes kills. You know, you want that at hand. Well, you just go to that article <clears throat> and, and uh, print, it. print it. Print it out, take it to the doctor, send it ahead to the doctor, send it ahead with a $50 bill. <laughs> you know, $50. <laughs> hey, I want to buy I want to buy 10 minutes of your time. Here's $50. Sit down and read this. So the next time I come in, we can discuss it. Uh, it's all there for you for free to uh, interact with your physician. Just go in with the attitude, hey, this Dr. McDougall, you know, he's one of those internet doctors. Well, I'm not really. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he has these crazy things to say that food has something to do with health. And here, whatever time, whatever time, because you can't expect to get the doctor's time for free. That's not fair. Right. Now, whatever time it takes, just say, look, add it to my bill. I want you to read this before I come in. Just like if you went in to buy a house paint. Mm -hmm. And you add some articles on one house paint as a verge to another, and they're selling the other. And, and you hear this one's better. Just bring, you know, you take the article in. I tell them I'll pay you fifteen dollars or whatever it is to read this article, and then you tell me why I should choose your house paint. I, doctors are it's just a business. Anyway, yeah. that's a great source for you. What about this here? What can you tell us a little bit about the free program? Oh yeah, the free program is a twelve-day program. And uh, yeah, it's tw 12 days. So say somebody says, there's just no way I can do this. Uh, I can't come to, the, to Dr. McDougall's program. I can't even afford one of his books. Well, there is a 12 day program that I wrote many years ago, still the same. One thing about me is I never change, but there's no reason to change because it's all true 
So why would you change the truth? Right, right. So we wrote this uh, 12 day program. That's when I was running a 12 day program at St. Lena Hospital. And it tells you uh, uh, what you need to do to prepare. It tells you about the blood test you ought to order. It gives you a 12 day menu. It gives you uh, all the recipes you'd need to, to choose. And plus you've got about four or 500 other recipes on the website. So if you don't want to eat those, choose others. It also says to you, you can just find one one meal you like and you can eat it over and over again for the next 20 years. I mean, this, you, this you, the simplification is what you really what you want to do. So right. that's the free program. Uh, send it to any of your friends who say they can't do it. Uh, I think the best thing though to send friends and if we could, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go to that and I'm, I'm just mentioning to you now, Dr. McDougall's color picture book on food poisoning is the best thing you can send to anybody. But while you're under education, go down to videos. Okay, and the video. Oh, yeah, the videos uh, is something that is definitely yeah. the videos right here. Are right here, right. So there are uh, McDougal's moments, which are two-minute videos that we send to you once or twice a week. There are free uh, lectures. Uh, let's see, I forget what those are. Well, I think those no, those are by guests, like H. Gilbert Welch. I guess they're by me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are those are free lectures I put up. And some of them include experts like those Royce. are great those yeah. are wonderful videos yeah. and then there's uh, oh yeah those are the ones and those are the ones like for example there's uh diet drugs and diabetes 100 years of missed uh -huh. opportunities that's a lecture right. i gave it's free it's for you to read you to watch uh the one about the intestines and milk and marketing <clears throat> marketing milk and disease those are all there for you to watch for free yes uh, the stark solution that's another one uh, so I, I think you would enjoy just clicking on a video, spending an hour there. And then there's another section uh, called uh, McDougal Experts. And we, if we can get back to that, that's one frame back. Uh, right here. Yeah, those right. are people, uh, you can click on that. Those are people that I invited during my advanced study weekends. For example, T. Colin Campbell, uh, Kim Williams, who's the uh, president of the American College of Cardiology, John Mackey, Neil Bernard, uh, uh, Peter Gursky, the head of the Cochrane Collaboration. Uh, these amazing people I yes. sat down oh. with and did five, ten minute interviews with them. And uh, yeah, I, you know, these are people you read about in the newspaper. Uh, these are, uh, are people that are making world, I mean, the head, this guy's the head of the American College of Cardiology, uh, Ken right. Williamson's. And I had a chance to sit down and have a frank conversation with him. Now, I, I, I have to say, and again, I don't mean to I don't mean to uh, act uh, in my own self-interest or brag to you, but I, I spent my whole life uh, interviewing. I've had my own television show for I had for about six years. I was co-host of a TV show for about 30 years. I had my own radio shows for about 15 years where I was the host, and the radio shows were extensive as uh, all over the West Coast. Uh, I was rated number one to number seven for three years in Los Angeles on KABC and another radio station there. But anyway, I, interviewing has been one of my fortes. So when I sit down and interview people, uh, I ask the right questions. You and these are these are first person. These ex extra, uh, expert uh, videos are first person. So you never know that I'm there. I'm cut out, but I've asked all the questions and they provided the answers. And if you wonder why they provide such interesting questions is because or answers is because I ask them very tough questions. Right. So you'll enjoy that. That's a that's a great place to spend your time and to get to know some of the people I have great respect for. Yes, yes, this is a great section. And also here people can watch the all the old or the past webinars as well. Because they are listed there. And they can always sign up for the new one coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and some of the webinars that you and I do together get kind of wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one thing you have my most, my most emotional, you know, my most uh, expressive. Uh, you'll find some, uh, some discussions we've had that uh, will probably get you a little bit excited. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully not worried about my mental and emotional capacity. But, but right. Anyway. So fun. Whatever, whatever gets me, whatever has got me. You know, the nice thing about the webinar, Gustavo, is you bring me an opportunity to uh, talk to people about what's on my mind, what's most troubling me, to me today, these days. Like, for example, I could tell you that uh, China 
last week, uh, uh, they came out with new dietary goals, guidelines for the Chinese people. And one of those guidelines is to cut their meat intake in half. You know, I, I'm not gonna write a newsletter about this, but excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, the dietary guidelines for China tell the people to cut their meat intake in half. The dietary guidelines for the United States tell you to shove as much cheese and meat and chicken and fish in your mouth as you can. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a problem here? You know, these, these barbaric Chinese and these wonderful U.S. Americans? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you better start rethinking what's going on. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I, I, there you got me to say something. The <laughs> there time. you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's this is a good platform for you to speak your mind and to. Yeah. Yeah, it is not planned. It's not rehearsed, and not we planned. all. Yeah. Are there any other spots that you want to show well, for the uh, let's, website? Let's see. Can you bring the uh, the website up again? Uh, uh -huh. there's, yes. Of course, the discussion board, which you can always just lurk on the discussion board, but uh, there are some people who, there who are really experts of what's going on. This is also the internet, ladies and gentlemen, and so people feel free to be as obnoxious right and mean as they want to be and they do that on our website too but we pretty quickly monitor this and take take those people down and we even uh, we even take them occasionally off uh, off the discussion board and ban them but not too often and i always give them the uh the greatest opportunity to stay connected with us and to express themselves a little bit differently james brown is the official monitor and he does a good job now jim of course mm -hmm. has a strong personality also but he's uh, monitored the board for at least three years and you may not always agree with what he has to say but believe me before somebody gets banned from our website it always goes past uh, jeff novak and myself so this is right. not a unilateral decision <clears throat> so i got to pay attention to the discussion board oh there's another the about part if you could go to about this is a uh, fun for me Yes, uh, it's, it's about it's about me. It's about, uh, you know, it's my story written. And it's also there is a uh, there's also the early years or the early years of Dr. McDougall. You can see because I was involved in a TV show for more than 30 years, we used to do segments and right. uh, you'll see me. You'll see my life over the past 30 years and uh, how I used to look younger. Don't you think that's possible? <laughs> Look at that. Look <laughs> and, at that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's me and, and, uh, that's when Mary and I first got married before we had children. Oh, my goodness. Wow. We lived on the plantation. So you might enjoy these video segments just as entertaining. And the other thing you'll see is the consistency of what I've had to say over 30 years. Am I just bullheaded? You know, it, you know why do I keep saying the same thing? Well, it's because that's the truth. Right. And you can see me say it in uh, in many different ways. I also have some interesting guests on there, like David Blankenhorn and Roy Swank and Henry Heimlich. I had Henry Heimlich on the show. In fact, we did a show with Henry Heimlich, the guy that did the Heimlich maneuver, where he explained that he never did the Heimlich maneuver himself. And he brought there were also two young girls that were on the show. One sister saved the other with the Heimlich maneuver. But what I heard just recently is uh, Henry Hank. I'm like is in a assisted living facility and for the first time in his whole life about last month he was able to use the Heimlich maneuver and save one of his fellow mm -hmm. residents uh, anyway you'll find all kinds of um, of, uh, of interviews uh, video interviews that, that I did of people and subjects that I did of people dating back uh, for 30 years so uh, just for entertainment I would go there and all oh, our staff, a nice way of meeting our staff. And don't forget the Research and Education Foundation. Right. Uh, our paper, by the way, on diet and MS, I believe will be published within the next two or three days. As soon as it is, I'll send out a notice. Okay. It's gone through eight years of work uh, involving about maybe over 10 staff members from Oregon Health and Science University, top uh, researchers, top uh, um you know, top people in every, every field, an analysis of data, and it was accepted by a medical journal and a good medical journal. It took us oh, almost a year to get the acceptance to that journal, reviewed and reviewed again. And I believe it's coming out in the next couple of days. I can right. keep being told that. 
So anyway, um, I don't know. One thing I'd like oh, here, Dr. Matulo. What I was going to say is don't forget to donate to the Research and Education Foundation. This is uh, right now it pays for medical students and residents to come to the program to learn. And uh, we any mm -hmm. new research project we decide to start will be paid out of those dollars. Believe me, this is better money spent than what you'd send to these wildlife foundations. Yes. Which are supported by the beef industry or uh, have other agendas that don't lead to, a, uh, to uh, effective uh, changes to save our world. Send it to us. We'll spend it and we'll spend it well. We take no administrative fees. Uh, Mary and I uh, run the entire foundation without any, any uh, payment to us. And uh, we do pay, of course, our staff to, to keep this foundation up and alive and running. And so uh, it's from our personal point of view, it's, uh, well, no, it's not really a loss, but just know that every one of your dollars goes to right, right. now educating students and maybe some research projects in the future. Wonderful. So all we need is $6 million. One of you let's out there has extra $6 million. Well, oh, let's just it. go ahead and do it. I, I raised 700000 for the MS study, and, and that was primarily due to generosity of a few people. And I was asked what I needed to do if I would do any more research. And I said, well, if I had the money, I would. And they asked what <laughs> I needed. And I said, I need, I need what the drug companies get. Right. <laughs> uh, one of their parts. I need, you know, I need six million dollars. Give me six million dollars. It's not much, actually. In the big solo, picture. There's, there's somebody out there listening right now that's got six million dollars. They don't know what to do with. Uh, right there. Uh, yeah, there you can give it to us. Uh, they're not going to give it to their kids. They're going to give it to some charity because their kids are already spoiled. Uh, give it to uh, Gus, and I, I will let you help me decide how we'll spend it in, so, in any way I can. Very good. A one and one. Uh, but you also give me $6. I'll take $6. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that, yeah, this foundation is great. You can. It, uh, it's an official 501c3 permanent. Right. I've been through all the uh, all the reviews that are ever necessary for a, right. a right. good foundation. One more thing to point out here is the recipes. I just think that they are. Um, this is a, a, a resource that right there, yeah. it's invaluable. People, I mean, it's alphabetized and look at that. The, you can find anything you want here. And, They're free. And I think you can also print out. Yeah, print. Yeah, you, you can find them. They're all free. You can print them out. Uh, you need to find, as I mentioned to you many times before, you need to find one, two, three, four things you like. Just make them over and over again. That's all. Right. Exactly. exactly. Dr. McDougall, can we take um, maybe five minutes and just ask a couple of sure. questions? Sure. I'll be good. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you. You know, we took the time to get people started on the website. Uh, do there are a few other things that we didn't uh, go through because they aren't free, and that is that we have a, a section to order books. We have a section to sign up for the Kauai trip. We have sections to, a section to sign up for our programs, including the 10-day, the advanced study. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just passed over those tabs. Uh, but you need to know that's where you can sign up for what uh, for what we do. You can also order four of my books that are in PDF form. There, are, no, there's six up, six books under eBooks, and you can download them as PDF files. Uh, we own them. And they're just amazing books. They're some of the, my, the best books I've ever written. They were my early books, The McDougall Plan, McDougall's Medicine, A Challenging Second Opinion. Uh, invaluable, up-to-date books. And you can uh, get that under shop. And, right. Yeah. And, so right uh, here we have the travel, for example. Yeah, for the travel. The, for the upcoming trip. And here what you were saying, you know, they yeah, all the sign other. Sign up for the programs uh, you know, and also the certification course which is uh, CEU credited and the dietary therapy course, which is credited by CME. So you can get your, your professional credits there. And uh, along with that, all of my basic information that you would have a hard time getting. I uh, made uh, these original articles from the 20s to the 80s uh, mm -hmm. in PDF form. So you can read the original articles that I refer to that are so important are the basic research about diabetes and about uh, high blood pressure and about heart disease. This is the stuff that was done before uh, industry bought 
the medical journals, before industry bought scientific researchers, before industry paid for what research was going to be done. Uh, that was before in the 1980s, and I, I copied those articles for you. Uh, if you sign up for the CEU or the CME course, you have access to those articles, hundreds of articles that you can mm -hmm. pull down, right. print, and you can read. It's right there. And, right. you know, the basic science doesn't change. When something found, is found to be true in the 1920s, it's still true in 2016. Yeah. Right. Well, Dr. McDougall, there is an anonymous registered dietitian that has sent a question for you. I'd like to at least get this one in. Uh, she says, I was wondering if you could relay, the, well, this question to you, Desi. I, I am an RD at a hospital and see some of the docs here pushing high protein diets to diabetics and teaching carbs are the enemy. Yeah. On the surface, uh, to them, it seems logical and the PTs buy it. How can one get the truth through to these clinicians and PTs? They think carbs make them fat. The good news is I have had three patients lose between 13 and 23 pounds in the last three weeks on the Start Solution diet. Talk about success. Thank you, Dr. Maldugo, for all you do. Well, that's a, that's a good question. I could spend an hour on it. Um, first <laughs> of all, uh, physicians know nothing about human nutrition. It's not taught. Uh, less than 3% of the education time in four years of medical school is dedicated to nutrition. And most of that is dedicated to uh, biochemical relationships between nutrients. Uh, nothing about dietary therapy is taught, nothing. Well, okay, so doctors know everything. You're dealing with the biggest egos in the world. So you as a dietitian who confronts a doctor, you're automatically, uh, uh, considered a lowly, a lowly element in the system. How dare you question me? You got that problem. And, uh, you know, the emperor has no clothes. So if the doctor knows nothing about nutrition, the easiest way to get rid of you is just to, you know, insult you. Who are you? You're a dietitian. I'm a doctor or whatever. So th that's one of the problems. Um, the other problem is there's always a little bit of truth in everything that you hear. You can treat type two diabetes with the Atkins diet, with a low carb diet. Uh, uh, this has been done. I could tell you the author's name if I thought about it, if I thought about it for a few minutes, but it's been done for years. Uh, Robert Atkins and I, if you look at listen to a radio show I did where I had him on my show as a guest twice, by the way, he would never have me on his radio show. And the reason he said it is that I would confuse people, but I had him on my show uh, before and uh, you can treat uh, type 2 diabetes with uh, the make yourself sick Atkins diet. Anything that causes people to lose weight will cure type 2 diabetes, and that's proved by bariatric surgery with an 80% cure rate. I've made the joke with you before that all, all disciplines of uh, medicine could get into this. For example, dentists can wire your teeth together and you will cure type 2 diabetes. Uh, oncologists can poison you with their chemotherapy and you'll lose weight and cure type 2 diabetes. Uh, let's see. Uh, neurosurgeons could do prefrontal lobotomies. You'd lose your appetite and you'd cure type 2 diabetes. And uh, general surgeons could cut off your lower extremities so you can't get to the refrigerator. You cure type 2 diabetes. Uh, or you can put them on a make yourself sick diet like the Atkins diet and you cure type 2 diabetes. Any way that you cause weight loss, you can cure type 2 diabetes. So uh, that part is true. You can cure type 2 diabetes with a diet. The diet, by the way, that makes you sick and a diet which will accelerate the deterioration and the date of death of a di diabetic patient. Now, just think about this for a minute. You're taking people who are... Uh, metabolically compromised. They have a metabolic handicap, and that is that they don't have adequate, well, type 2, they have adequate pancreas, func pancreas function, but they're compromised in the sense that the body can't handle all of the obesity that they have, and their immune systems are depressed. And if they're towards type 1 diabetic, they've got the problem of some insulin insufficiency. So, so let's just all agree they're compromised people. You can prove this to yourself easily by realizing that if they diabetic, especially type 1, but even a type 2 gets an infection in their foot, it could turn into gangrene very quickly. So they must get uh, serious and immediate attention. 
if you or I get a sore on our foot, it could be there for six months and say no big deal because we have the ability to defend and repair that somebody with this metabolic handicap doesn't have. Now think about it for a minute. Feeding a low carb diet is a diet of beef, butter, brie. It's a diet of animal foods. Uh, we know these foods, unless you've been swayed by the, uh, the pro-saturated fat uh, liars. Uh, we've known for a hundred years that eating uh, high cholesterol diets, which means eating animal foods, you can blame the saturated fat, you can blame the cholesterol, you can blame the lack of fiber, you can blame whatever. Uh, that these diets uh, cause the arteries to rot and give you heart attacks and strokes. And that's on somebody without diabetes. Half the people get cardiovascular disease. What if you take and feed the same diet to someone with this metabolic handicap of diabetes? Makes no sense at all. So they die very quickly of uh, cardiovascular complications. And in fact, within 11 to 17 years of diagnosis, a serious diabetic will have developed a complication such as heart attack, stroke, Kidney failure. The kidneys uh, fail under the burden of excess protein. Well, these are high protein diets. We've known for a hundred years that protein in the diet, even vegetable protein too much, but mostly animal protein, accelerates glomerular function, increases uh, glomerular filtration rates and flows and destroys kidney tissue. So what's the biggest problem with diabetics? They end up in kidney failure, or one of the biggest problems. Then they're on a dialysis machine. Why would you feed a diet which causes kidney failure and otherwise normal people to diabetics who can't defend themselves. Uh, they have higher rates of cancer than the general population. So what causes cancer? The very few foods recommended by low carb diets. Uh, well, let's see, that, that's probably, I could go on and on and on, but osteoporosis is more common. You feed a diet that's high in animal protein causes osteoporosis, constipation. I mean. Uh, Go on. So it makes no sense to take somebody who's metabolically handicapped and feed them a diet that poisons and kills people without diabetes. Well, let's see. So uh, how do you answer the doctors? Well, maybe you could answer the doctors from another point of view. You could say, well, how about all these things that we're concerned about, about feeding people all this butter brie and, and bacon? How about all these things? Oh, well, we've just proven all that. That's just that's not true. That's, that's what some of them will do. But these are ignorant people. Right. So you have to deal with that. Well, maybe if you get somebody to say, well, yeah, you know, I never, I never thought about that, but you're right. We're feeling, feeding, killing foods to diabetics. Doesn't make sense. And then you take the trouble of, well, would you like to look at some of the basic scientific research? And if you have access to those articles I just talked about, uh, with those two courses, you go and you find uh, Sweeney, his work on uh, taking his medical students and feeding them a high sugar diet. I mean, candy and sugar and oh, just basically sugar. And all his medical students tested normal on the glucose tolerance test. And they fed the same students a diet very high in fats and oils. And all became diabetic. Uh, a guy named Percival Hemsworth, he started uh, his research in the 20s. And by 1940, he published the classic article in the British Medical Journal. You know, you can look this up. Just look up Percival Hemsworth and British Medical Journal 1940 and diabetes. And it'll come up on Google. You can read it. It's free access. And that was a classic article that showed that feeding fat causes diabetes in people and feeding carbohydrate doesn't. Uh, you could take them to the Brunzel work. You could show these open-minded doctors to Brunzel's work from University of Washington, where he took and made up uh, two synthetic diets of sugar. One was 45% sugar, made of sugar, table sugar and multidextrin. And the, then they, what they did is they fed the same people a diet with 85% sugar every aspect of their diabetes became better. Fasting blood sugars, 24 hour sugars, insulin levels, everything improved on the high sugar diet. And they concluded in this New England Journal of Medicine article that sugar increases the sensitivity of insulin. Mm -hmm. And then you can take them to the diabetes care article, which I believe was published in 2011, but it could have been 2013. Uh, you can find it. It's uh, treating uh, type one diabetics with a high fat diet. What they found is that type one diabetics, remember they have to have insulin. When they fed fats and oils to these diabetics, their insulin requirements increased and so did their blood sugars. Well, that was just public in, in the classic diabetes journal, Diabetes Cares. Right. And so you could sit down with the doctors and show them the basic research that shows that fat paralyzes insulin and sugar actually makes insulin work better. 
and that these same diets that we're recommending for to cure diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which it always does, or to greatly help type 1 and type 1 and a half diabetics, uh, these same diets are the diets that are recommended by the Heart Association to prevent heart disease, by the Cancer Society to prevent cancer. I, I mean, where's the mystery here? Uh, but unfortunately, uh, doctors are easily persuaded into wrong messages, particularly if it's something that they can grasp. And, uh, and, taking, uh, uh, and making a low-carbohydrate diet, which means uh, throwing away the bun and scraping off the pickles and ketchup, that's easy. They can understand that. Uh, they, they grab onto that. And besides that, they like that, the food. Uh, right. up, up until recently, I haven't been to a heart association meeting lately, but up until recently, the main fair was uh, beef steak and cheesecake. Mm -hmm. you know, so here, here are men and women who are eating the very diet that, that's it's killing and sickening their patients. If you go to any hospital, any hospital I am aware, including Adventist hospitals, which I've worked in, they're all serving the same diet that brought the people there in the first place. So, you know, when you go to an Adventist hospital and they're serving meat to the patients, something that's against their basic tenets, against their founding principles, you have to know that there's a problem that's going on. Uh, so, you know, you're confronting their own dinner plate. You're confronting uh, principles that they're used at their hospital, which are immoral and unethical in terms of their religious beliefs. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't know where to stop, uh, but if doctors are recommending that, then I, I would ask this dietitian to step back and say, uh, these doctors are killing my patients. What am I going to do about it short of getting fired? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, what, what are you going to do about it? As I told you, I had this great conference with this medical school on the East Coast yesterday, and uh, the response was overwhelmingly positive. And there was no challenge. And so uh, lots of people are getting out there, and the message is switching in our direction. And maybe it's because of health, but maybe it's because you know, people are tired of uh, factory farming and all the cruelty. And maybe it's because people realize, like we started this conversation and should probably end it, is that uh, we're destroying planet Earth. We're eating the planet to death. And I believe we have only one card to play, and that's the food card. Otherwise, we're done. We're extinct. And my children are going to have a very tough time. I'm old. I'm going to die soon. Uh, so I've lived out my good years, and I probably the rest of my time here will be uh, uh, comfortable. Let's just hope it is. It's comfortable. But that's not going to be the case for my kids. And I guarantee you that's not going to be the case for my grandchildren. So if you have to have your eyes opened, if you have to challenge, quote, the authorities, uh, short of having them hurt you, because that makes you ineffective, then get out there and do it. Get out there and tell them, look, uh, you know, uh, this is not, I'm not going to tolerate this. You can kill yourself with diabetes if you want, if you're over 21. You can't do this to children, by the way. Civilized people take care of children. You can kill yourself with colon cancer. You can do that if you want. But right now what you're doing is interfering with my personal family's life. You're mm -hmm. destroying their opportunity for their future. And to make me, that makes me very, very mad, very concerned. I am mad as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that. I am mad it as is. hell. And if it doesn't come across next webinar, I'll show you I'm mad as hell. How and, mad you are. Yeah, really. And because you're destroying my children and my grandchildren's future. And you know when I say you, you know who I'm talking about. So get out there. Don't take any crap from these, uh, go shoot me, garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, take from, don't take it from those around you who teach uh, dangerous things like low-carb diets, dangerous to people, dangerous to the environment, dangerous to everything. And they're liars and they're cheaters and they got all the money and we're going to beat them to, to death. We're going to beat them to death because we're right. We have the truth and success, but we have to all do it together. It's not just Gustavo and I. And it's, it's the millions of us who are becoming aware of what's going on. And we are going to change the world. As I say in my dedication, the world is ours to save. And we can do it. We can, we really can. It's just that uh, sometimes we don't speak up and uh, what you're saying is very true. It's very personal. It's our children, our parents, our families. And well, Dr. McDougall, we haven't decided the topic for next week, but we will and sure. we'll send 
I mean, your office will send an announcement to everybody. And we'll also send an announcement about this week's webinar, which uh, we, for one reason or another, probably because we were all off in Alaska, it didn't right. get <laughs> it didn't So with this, this webinar will be reposted uh, later, later today, and we'll send you all a notice about it. Right. Well, thank you for My being pleasure. here. One Those more were, time. Yeah, it's good to be back. Um, and we're going to Well, we are glad you're back. We did miss you. People wrote it oh, here. Oh, did really? they really? They, they couldn't even tell I was gone. <laughs> oh, yes. We, <laughs> yeah. well, well, sure actually, Lyle. last week, Dr. Lyle did an amazing webinar. So, uh, everybody, please go and watch it. Um, the, those are webinars that you have to watch two or three times because they're so packed with information. Very, it was great. Yeah, we're going to have some other people up soon, like uh, Anthony Lim. Right. Yes, we have him scheduled. And uh, I don't know what other the McDougal team will be getting going. Yes, maybe, this, maybe Craig will come back sometime. I don't know, my son. Right. Craig. The person. Maybe, maybe we can get Mary to come back. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's see if we get uh, lure maybe, her. Maybe for next week. She's listening. Be... She, she's listening right now in the other room, and I'm sure she's <laughs> crunching her teeth and stamping her Mary, feet. Mary, we me, need you. Telling me I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> he, he's going to pay for this. He's going to pay big time. Well, okay, I am part of the conspiracy too, but I'm too far away, so I can't pay for it. <laughs> hey, and by, by the way, I do want to mention, since I, you know, I know you, you've been uh, uh, pursuing your quest of uh, good health, and it really shows. Uh, look, looking at you right now. Uh, I think you're at the trimmest and healthiest looking I've ever seen you, and that oh, has been at least you. at least ninety pounds away. Right. Yeah. I am. I'm very. I feel great. What can I say? This is a, and it feels great when I get in the elevator and people tell me, "Hey, you're so skinny." Yeah, really. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, okay. Thank you. Here's the book." Yeah, it really. <laughs> uh, very good. Now I want to mention something, if you don't mind. Uh, 30 seconds this is not a person from your team but there is a really good webinar next tuesday uh that chef aj is doing oh, and it's, good. it's free and she's going to talk about how to eat healthfully uh anywhere with, especially when traveling because of course she travels a lot and i travel a lot and so next tuesday she's doing a webinar in the evening about so, eating healthfully anywhere how do we contact her yeah. how, do we, how do we get involved in that webinar 